Hey, it's Alex here with Wealthpin, and let me ask you a question. When you hear the term arms race, what do you think about? I feel like most people, you probably think of it in terms of military, like nuclear arms race. But what we're living through right now is a different kind of arms race. It's an artificial intelligence arms race, a race to conquer AI and be the first nation or company to achieve what no one has ever done before, you know, general artificial intelligence, which will completely transform the world. And we're living on the cusp of that as we speak. Now, the thing is, as of now, there's not a AI company, at least not any good ones. You know, there's social media companies like Facebook, you, you know, YouTube or TikTok. Like these are, these create social media products, but there's not one of those for AI. So if you want to figure out the companies that are going to profit, at least in this first iteration of AI, the companies that are going to profit the most are companies that either apply AI to their current businesses or create the infrastructure that will allow the AI revolution to blossom. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Okay, These are three companies that I think will stand to benefit the most from the first phase of artificial intelligence. Ready? Let's dive in. The first AI arms race company is Super Microcomputer Inc. What do they do? They create servers that power the data centers that power all of the data that AI sends that power the AI revolution okay so these are servers are a critical backbone of AI supermicro computer SMCI they create those servers um, they've been having a stellar run financially uh, as you can see here uh, in the second quarter of 2023 their revenue is up 54% year over year. And let's go just to uh, their longer term revenue statement. As you can see, in 2022, they were up from 3.5 billion to 5.1 billion between 2021 and 2022. So 2023 is going to be huge for them, I think. Um, you know, in this quarter, they already hit 1.8 billion. So, you know, I mean, if this holds, uh, and I think it will for a couple of reasons I'm going to show you in a second, I mean, you know, look, 54% growth year over year, you know, can't, you know, shouldn't do this, but if you did extrapolate it out quarter to quarter, I mean, that's, you know, 50% growth on the year. So let's look at some of their other financial metrics that I like to look at. So obviously if a company increases its revenue, it doesn't always mean it's a better company, okay? Because it maybe incurred more costs to get that accelerated revenue growth. But if you look here, this is what I like to see. So not only is revenue increasing, but gross profit is increasing. The profit margin is increasing um, from 534 million to 800 million between June, 2021 and June, 2022. Uh, so just, you know, that's, that's not in 2023, but that trend shows me that this company is, is able to expand and scale without taking on a bunch of huge operating costs or additional expenditures. Uh, so that's, those are the two, two things I like to look at. There's a third one. If we go down here and this is where it gets really cool. So net income, right? In 2021, it was 111 million in 2022 it was 285 million, more than double net. I mean, this company's raking in cash hand over fist. Uh, it's really, really impressive to see. Uh, I think that they are in an excellent financial position. We can go up to the, their profitability and their gross profit margin. I think it's great. It seems to be below the sector median. Um, however, they have invested in a few, uh, you know, business development initiatives uh, with servers, um, re, you know, creating servers that are going to be uh, ESG compliant, you know, green. So I think that as, as their revenues continue to expand uh, and those, and those uh, CapEx expenditures sort of get washed out, I think this number is going to improve a lot. And I, I still think that SMCI is an excellent company. Um, they've signed a couple of huge deals recently. You see this one. Uh, they partnered with NVIDIA to uh, create servers for AI training, deep learning, generative AI. I mean, these are, this is, you know, AI is supposed to be, expected to be a $2 trillion industry. And if it's all powered by, you know, super micro 
computers. Uh, servers, well, that's, that's real big for business. That's real, real good for business. You can also see that they've uh, signed a deal with Rakuten, which is a massive multinational conglomerate. That's a big deal for them too. Uh, and if we go over here, we can see their price. You know, right now they're trading at about 109 bucks. Um, and for a while they've been trading right within this since February. Uh, they've been trading right in this little ascending channel. So, you know, this combined with, with everything else uh, leads me to think that that's, you know, be, you know, bullish on SMCI. I think that really, you know, they're going to continue bouncing between this resistance and support. And uh, what I'm, you know, what I'm looking for for the for the run to stop would be, you know, maybe for the the price action to drop below the support. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. So that's AI arms race stock number one. So now let's move on to AI stock number two. It's some company that we all know and I think love, Adobe. Okay. If you haven't used them recently, you probably used them in school uh, because they are the world leader in Photoshop, Illustrator, PDF signing. Um, we all know Adobe, right? But what Adobe is doing, which is real cool, is they're using AI to basically transform the creative process. So this is one of the biggest applications of AI, at least in the short term. You see it with ChatGPT, you see it with some of the uh, other uh, generative art applications, but it's, it's creativity. It's helping humans create more, faster, easier. And that has, you know, kind of been at the forefront of Adobe's business mission for decades, and they're leading the charge on this, uh, on this, latest, this latest revolution for it. So you can see, you know, this is, this is some of the capabilities. You can just pick and swap uh, images to, to drop into seamlessly into, into the background. Um, this is, may seem simple because the AI is so good, but this stuff traditionally would take hours and, and, and a lot of high skill, a lot of training to do, to do well. But this just democratizes the whole creative process. I mean, the AI is adaptable and it makes, it makes creating great art and great content, you know, as simple as just being able to basically operate a mouse. Uh, as you can see here, you can basically change the background of an image you took. This is, you know, like a real video is taken that's now completely altered just by AI. Um, it's insane. It's real crazy. Uh, you can see here, Another application is you just, you know, it's basically sort of like ChatGPT for art. You just type in what you want to see and, you know, the AI creates it. This is, this is you know, easily cut out sections of a video. It's, it's basically magic. It's basically magic. So uh, this, is, this is pretty cool from Adobe, but let's look at their financials. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, so the total revenues have increased, you know, since their last statement, uh, year over year, 2021 to 2022, uh, about, you know, about 2 billion, by about 2 billion. Uh, this is also, you know, what I want to see back to the three metrics I look at increasing revenues, increasing profit. Right, so they're growing, but they're not losing. They're not taking a smaller percentage of that growth. So, got 13 billion to 15 billion uh, in gross profit. Let's go down here. Let's see what the net income is. So, net income declined a little bit. Uh, you know, you can't have everything with a stock, but this is where it gets real cool. I told you. Well, if you know, Adobe is is pretty much a software company, and, and software companies traditionally have just insane margins. Well, look at that. Gross profit margin Adobe. 87%, over 87%. I mean, that's freaking insane. That's crazy. So, you know, I am uh, bullish on Adobe stock. We can take a look at the chart. Uh, you can see that it's down from its peak of about 700. Right now it's trading for about 385. So, you know, 
it has a lot of a lot of uh, reclaiming to do. You know, it dropped hard in, the t in throughout 2021 into 2022. It's recovered a little bit, but I mean, we could potentially see a double here if it reaches that that same high it had, uh, you know, in 2021. So yeah, so that's Adobe. Uh, AI arms race stock number two. Number three, NVIDIA. You've probably all heard of them. They're a chips company. Uh, they were returned a lot to investors over the past decade or so. Um, however, as of late, their stock price was battered first by the crypto collapse. Um, you know, as a lot of their chips were used in crypto mining rigs, and when the crypto industry collapsed, well, the need for NVIDIA chips went down. Um, however, the stock price has rebounded quite well, and I think it still has some room to go. Uh, NVIDIA is not in as good of financial shape as the other two companies, but you can see here total revenues have uh, the total revenues have gone up. The gross profit margin uh, has gone down, though, um, and their net income ooh, it's dropped a lot. Right. By about half. So, why do I still like Nvidia? Well, I just think that at the end of the day, Nvidia is just an entrenched company. I mean, they are huge, uh, and I and if you think that AI is going to be as big as it is, like what companies are going to power that revolution, right? Um, maybe Taiwan Semiconductor, you know. AMD, you know, these are all competitors of NVIDIA, but I mean the pie is going to be huge and I think NVIDIA will be able to grab a significantly large portion of it. Uh, you know, this is from their latest uh, investor presentation. You know, they obviously think that they can do something with AI. Um, you know, the CEO compared data centers to like AI factories where you, you bring in this data like in a factory, you bring in raw materials and you create products, right? Out of that, of those raw materials, where data centers are basically going to be the factories of AI, where they bring in all this data and they output, you know, whatever you need, whatever AI, you know, information product will be able to create. You know, so like, you know, Adobe, you know, you want to send a, you know, new like type of digital art, right? That's got to be processed somewhere. It's got to be processed in a data center. And Adobe's great, but what what chips power Adobe and allows it to function well. It's Nvidia chips or chips just like Nvidia's. So they're the backbone of the AI revolution. You can see that they have a couple. They're they're really trying to sort of meld the hardware and the software aspect with the omniverse. Uh, but what's really you know this is this is their their biggest pitch for for AI is that the way that they design their chips. And their software allows them to process data at an extremely fast speed. And that's, in, that's critical for AI, obviously. You have all this data coming in, like we've mentioned. So I think that NVIDIA is well set up with their current stack of technology, with the investments they've made, which is partially why their net income is a little lower and their gross profits a little lower, is because these investments they've made in positioning themselves for the next phase of technology. And again, I just like, it's like AMD, you know, Taiwan Semiconductor and NVIDIA, you know, it's like, it's basically three companies that can, that can do this stuff. So $2 trillion divided by three companies, more than that, if you consider all the, you know, tertiary things that are going to arise from AI, I mean, it's just a huge economic money pot. Uh, so I, I, I'm really, I think NVIDIA is going to be a solid investment moving forward. I think it still has room to grow you know, even past its highs in 2021. So, so yeah, that's AI arms race stock number three, NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. So what do you think? Do you think these three companies will be good AI picks in the future? Do you think there's other better ones? I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.